David Macrath and I want to issue a general warning to all Christians everywhere and anybody who cares about uh, seeking God faithfully and uh, by the means that God has appointed not to use the Holy Spirit board as marketed by Amazon. This is a game marketed on Amazon uh, in the name of a company which calls itself Holy Spirit Games, which in itself is a blasphemous title. This board claims to be a seance. It claims to provide direct access to the Lord Jesus Christ and via the Holy Spirit. And as such, it is the mixing of that which is unclean with that which is suppo supposedly with that which is clean, although God will have nothing to do with this, I'm sure. But this board describes itself as a Christian uh, religious talking board or seance or for seance. And the photograph that goes with the uh, advertising shows people having a seance, uh, holding a seance around this board. Now, by seance, I understand that people meet together and they seek sometimes uh, by using a Ouija board or other things uh, to, to, to communicate with the spirits of dead people, something which is forbidden in the scriptures, something which is uh, occultic. And they think that they've spoken to dead people. But in fact, they've spoken to demons. This board markets itself with the following blurb. The Holy Spirit board is the only spirit board designed to directly contact our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Unlike other seance boards that are often used to contact ghosts and demons this is a one-way ticket straight to heaven well there's so much lies in that first of all we aren't to contact the lord jesus christ by a seance board that is absolutely unthinkable the lord jesus isn't like that god isn't like that we can pray directly to him we don't need a seance board but there are those who will buy this game and believing the blurb that this board will enable them to to have a one-way ticket straight to heaven this is the words of this um of this marketing now let's read from the word of god let's read from the scriptures leviticus chapter 10 verses 1 to 3 and nadab and abihu the sons of aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the lord which he commanded them not and they went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. So Nadab and Abihu offered strange fire before the Lord that he hadn't commanded, and fire came out from the Lord and devoured them. And then Moses says to Aaron, This is... God saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. Now, you can't be sanctified if you take a seance, if you take a Ouija board, even if you Christianize it. You can't be sanctified by that means before the Lord. Let's uh, consider the comments of those or the reviews of those who use this. And I'm going to need to switch my phone on for this. But in essence, this is uh, the top comment of this particular um game this supposed game this holy spirit board which takes the name of god in vain which blasphemes the name of the holy spirit so let me read part of this top comment this top review i was obviously very skeptical no let me just see we used to say our prayers every night but now instead we speak to the holy spirit direct it would appear now that in the afterlife the holy spirit identifies as female and now goes by the name mania who knew right so that's obviously a demonic spirit straight off and uh, let's read on this comment i was obviously very skeptical at this at first but showing me her power and allowing me to speak to my family and friends all this through the holy spirit board note that have long passed on i now understand the misguided truths that our loved ones do not rise up to heaven like popular belief but in fact are left to roam the earth for all time and um and they are to watch over us and guide us to greatness, wealth, sexual pleasures and the eternal happiness. And um, and then goes on to say, since speaking with Mania on a weekly basis, I've been able to understand the voices that I hear every day. The voices that were telling me it is OK to take those things from others. It is OK to touch, kiss and enjoy the pleasures of other people. Mania has shown me that I can embrace all those things that I once thought of as evil and wrong are in fact good and righteous. So this spirit that they mistook for the Holy Spirit is telling them it's fine to be sexually immoral. It's fine to steal stuff. 
is fine to pursue wealth and greatness and sexual pleasures. Um, and uh, so the reviewer goes on to say, Thank you, Holy Spirit Games, for allowing me to finally speak to the voice that has guided me for so long. And then in an edit, the same reviewer says, uh, turns out Mania isn't the Holy Spirit and is in fact the goddess of the dead, spirits and chaos and is the mother of ghosts, the undead and other spirits of the night as well as the lairs and remains. So, and then it goes on to say that they were tricked by this spirit. And of course they were. This was a demon that was speaking to them but for some time they believed this was the Holy Spirit who identified as female and uh, had the name Mania. How absurd and how foolish to be involved in such things. How ridiculous to um, to get involved in such things yet people do. Now this is extraordinarily blasphemous before Almighty God that this game should exist, that it should be marketed, that it should be sold uh, uh, under the uh, uh, umbrella of Holy Spirit games. So, why is this like strange fire? It's like the strange fire of uh, of Nadab and Abihu. Well, the first thing is, there is no sanctifying of God in our hearts before approaching God. This is a new way of approaching God. This is a novel way of approaching God, which is what Nadab and Abihu did. They approached God with strange fire. Uh, and uh, so... Um, it's a way that we don't need. We can come to God directly through Jesus Christ. We know that he hears our prayers if we're Christians. We don't need a Ouija board to deceive us or distract us or, 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 or uh, dishonor God. This is absolutely absurd to use such a thing, and yet people are being taken in by this. So first of all, our approach to God is by prayer. God hears our prayers anyway when we come to him in the right way, when we call upon the name of the Lord, when we come to him through Jesus Christ as our saviour from sin, God hears our prayers anyway. The second thing, of course, as we said, is through Jesus Christ. We must come to God through Jesus Christ. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God hears our prayers uh, and we know that he hears our prayers. We see that in Revelation, for example, our prayers rising up before the throne of God as incense, which is um, which is sweet to him. And then, of course, we come to God in repentance. That means sanctifying him in our hearts, recognizing that we are sinners, recognizing that we are guilty before God and repenting of our sins. Now, for all of these things, we don't need a board. We don't need a seance. We don't need any occult things used to call up demons. Now, I'm suggesting that this is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to speak about our Holy Spirit board, which seems to have the power or control to call up the Holy Spirit. First of all, the Holy Spirit is holy, and this board is not holy, so it blasphemes the Holy Spirit. Secondly, the Holy Spirit is God. He is omniscient, omnipotent. He is um, omnipresent. He is everywhere. All the characteristics that belong to Almighty God belong to the Holy Spirit, but he is holy and he is sovereign. The Holy Spirit blows where he chooses. The idea that we can contact him using occult boards or using sliders or uh, I think as they call them planchettes or that we can contact the Holy Spirit or command him in some way is utterly alien to scripture. The Holy Spirit, Jesus tells us, bloweth where he listeth. The idea that we could call up God or that we could contact the Holy Spirit uh, or, 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 or have a one-way ticket to heaven to, to cite the blurb through um, a, a, a Ouija board is, is blasphemous and it's, it's utterly presumptuous. It's a presumptuous sin. God doesn't communicate with us in that way. God hasn't revealed himself in to us in that way. It is a strange fire. It is abominable to God. It is an affront to his holiness. Now, there is a lack of heart preparation as well. You don't need to prepare your heart through repentance, through seeking God in prayer, through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, through trusting in his blood. You just come and you pick up your planchette and you take your board and that gives you automatic right to communicate with God. Well, God isn't playing that game. The Holy Spirit is, first of all, holy. He is the Holy Spirit of that thrice holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But for these people, there's a lack of heart preparation. And we can see that just in that reviewer who says that, uh, that the spirit they contacted told them it was fine to get involved in sexual immorality and to steal stuff. Now, that's not the Spirit of God who's teaching people to do that. So the implications are as follows. First of all, blasphemy. The third commandment is, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. 
for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And uh, the, uh, this commandment uh, uh, tells us that, uh, that uh, God will um, judge those who take his name in vain. Now, we, we live in a generation of horrible blasphemies, but this is a horrible blasphemy, this board. It is utterly blasphemous. It is the taking of God's name in vain. It is the idea that we have a little God whom we can control in our micro, under our microscope or in our test tube or on our Ouija board. It is the taking of God's name in vain, and God won't hold those uh, guiltless who take his name in vain. And then in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10 and verses 31 and 32, Jesus talks about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And um, Jesus not only says that they won't be forgiven in the world to come, but he says they won't be forgiven in this world either. So you might reasonably expect that those who abuse the Holy Spirit of God and the Lord Jesus Christ in this way might reasonably not only receive judgments in the world to come and damnation, but judgments in this world as well. Now, I'm not saying this is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. If you are using this game, if you are tempted to use this game, then my advice to you is that you forsake it, that you flee it, that you burn it, that you uh, repent and you turn back to God through Jesus Christ. Perhaps God will show you mercy. He promises mercy to those who repent and believe on the Lord Jesus. But be under no, uh, no delusions whatsoever that this game that this board, that this playing with the Holy Spirit supposedly will bring you guilt before God. And who knows whether God will grant you repentance. Turn from that sin and believe on the Lord Jesus and put this wickedness away. And the third thing is this, it's merchandising the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 8, we read about Simon Magus who wanted to purchase the gift of the Holy Spirit from the Apostle Peter and offered him money and Peter said to him, your money perish with you. This is merchandising the Holy Spirit. No doubt a tidy profit is being made by those who are now mockingly buying and selling the Holy Spirit board. And those who merchandise the Holy Spirit better watch out because um, Peter says to Simon, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. How wicked it is that men would do such a thing, would take God's name in vain, would blaspheme the Holy Spirit, would blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ in such a way. So the implications of this are, first of all, God's anger. God will judge those who create, market, sell and use such things. God, we read in the Bible, is not mocked. This game mocks God. It makes him into a little God, a God who is impotent, a God over whom we have control, a God who is obliged to answer us, a God who we can um, reduce to a size which is suitable to us. God is not mocked, the first thing is this, God's anger is kindled against those on account of their sins who use such things. And we ought to grieve over this and other blasphemies in our day, we ought to mourn over this, we ought rather to mourn over this sin in our day. It's a sign of the times in which we live. Now, we might actually look for the judgments of God, not only against those who created this game and those who use it, but against Amazon as well. And one must warn Amazon, Amazon, you must not sell such things, because to do so is to provoke God's wrath against you for your sins. We know that Amazon promotes many other things which are unhelpful and unholy. This is all part of the declension that we see uh, in our in moral and and a fall into moral and spiritual darkness in the generation in which we live. Let's just turn to Ezekiel eight thirteen. Every day it seems something comes up. Everything every day something new happens, which is against God, against the Word of God, against His truth, and which is dishonouring to His name. For example, the blessing of. The now blessing of sodomy in the churches of England, in the Church of England, which is unthinkable and, and, and an abomination to Almighty God. Well, just to say one thing here, just to quote um, Ezekiel 8 verse 13. Uh, he said also unto me, turn thee yet again and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Every day there seem to be abominations. Every day there seem to be all kinds of new wickednesses and new ways invented to mock God. And this game, this Holy Spirit board game, is a new way of mocking God. And we should be trembling in our boots over this. God is not mocked. 
And again, for some, there is no turning back. Jesus says those who blaspheme the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. If you are playing this game, repent and turn and put it away and seek the Lord Jesus Christ before it's too late. By chance, God will grant you repentance and save you from your sin and give you everlasting life. Now, in addition to provoking God's wrath and God's judgments, which it certainly does, this game also means that there is a handing over by God to those who are using it. So although it may look Christianized as a board game, it is in fact a, a demonic game on steroids. Not only is there a handing over of God, but there is a rush, no doubt, on the part of demons like that demon mania that I read uh, the, the reviewer was talking about a rush by these demons to to um to to infest those who are having these seances i remember many years ago at school there was a certain boy whose family held a seance in their home and he said very strange and frightening things happen seances are real ouija boards are real they access the occult they access demons they don't access the dead we can't access the dead we can't speak to the dead but demons presenting themselves as the dead uh, this boy his his family they had a seance and, and various things happened and uh they used a ouija board and they were afraid so they phoned up the police they dialed 999 and said such and such a things are happening the police said you're using a ouija board it's nothing to do with us can't help you and of course not people are playing with fire they're playing with the powers of darkness they're playing with demons and demonic entities now, in my own family, there was a, there's a member of my family who is a medium, and they have accessed they have accessed a spirit through seances that calls itself Jesus. But that's Satan presenting himself as an angel of light that cannot be the Jesus of the Bible. Now, there's no insight whatsoever on the part of that medium, but essentially, Satan presents himself as an angel of light. Even this reviewer in Amazon said that they thought it was the Holy Spirit. But they had to find out that this was in fact a demon uh, and uh, yet for a long time it seems they were praying to this demon and using this demon and still don't seem to be repentant for their sin. That There is a giving over by God and uh, God will just give them over to their sins, leave them to it, abandon to the powers of darkness and to the occult and to deception and to evil. Demons will present themselves as angels of light. Um, these people will expose themselves to those demons. Some might become possessed by those demons. Uh, and they will, unless they repent and pray and um, they flee from this. So it's extraordinarily dangerous to be involved in such things. This board game undermines the gospel. This board game provokes the wrath of God. It is strange fire. This board game is dishonoring to God. This board game is blasphemous. This board game provokes the wrath of God and the judgments of God. This board game also opens up the doorway to occult powers and demons and every kind of oppression. This is not how we access God. We come to God through faith in Jesus Christ. Now, this board game is an example of unparalleled evil and blasphemy in our days. We need to cleave to the Lord Jesus Christ. As a Christian, I pray to the Lord constantly and I know that he hears my prayers and I see the answers to my prayers. I don't need some pathetic piece of cardboard to access the throne of grace. I come to God through Jesus Christ. My sins are forgiven because I have trusted in Jesus Christ. But there's a spiritual war going on and one of Satan's strategies is to deceive people into thinking that God is not who he is or not as he is and that man has the power to access God as he chooses by his own religion and by his own means, even if he uses the names of God. But man only becomes more guilty before God if he takes his name in vain. So as Christians, we need to get back to this book, the Bible. We need to read the Bible. We need to obey the Bible, which calls us to repent of our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if we would be saved. That's what makes us Christians. And when we are Christians, we need to have strong confidence that God hears our prayers as he has promised to do. And that's not for our sake, because we're not worthy. That's because the Lord Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins with his own precious blood. And so if you have ears to hear, put away your blasphemies, put away your strange fires, and sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. To the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Amen.